Good, okay. So our first speaker in line is uh, Michelle Thompson. And um, it's really giving me a hard time because I have no idea how to introduce her because whatever I will say, it's not gonna do justice to her. So I think the best is, is I'm going to use her own words for that. Um, and I also have to mention, however, that she's, her internet connection is not very stable in the moment. So likely we are going to uh, watch this as a video, uh, unless Michelle, you are here and you would like to try, <laughs> give it a try. Oh, hi there. Hi. I'm, I'm here, but I only have audio. Okay, and but you can see the presentation, so you could yeah talk along the presentation, right? It it might be a good idea to play the video if you can. Okay, there we go with the video. So Michelle, um, in her own words, she enjoys thinking and doing, not necessarily in that order. And uh, she has a master uh, in electrical engineering uh, in information theory. She has worked uh, in landline and satellite telephony, uh, serves in a var variety of volunteer positions in the um, amateur radio community. Uh, and she is co-founder and current CEO of the Open Research Institute. Uh, so what is the OI, ORI? It's a research and development organization that is a nonprofit. Um, she is uh, uh, one of the previous uh, board of directors was uh, Bruce Perens um, and Michelle and, and Bruce, they both attended uh, the workshop in person Hello, everybody. Um, in Spain. So that's, uh, that was a very uh, exciting time. And um, so the ORI, so one of the main important purposes of it is to facilitate the worldwide collaboration and the development of technology that would otherwise be restricted under national laws like ITAR and EAR. And also they are on the forefront of fighting for open source. And uh, we have to be very thankful to them for that because they, they really basically started this movement on a terrestrial uh, layer, I would say, and uh, we can now apply this to, to space and uh, still, um, uh, yeah, Open Research Institute is, is going to support us in that and how that we will hear now from the talk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you the, the video and, um, uh, later on, we are going to uh, address some of the questions to Michelle. She is available in the chat, and her audio is also working. The video was on already. The video was on already. Okay, sorry. Um, Hello, everyone. All right, okay. So, I'm Michelle okay. Thompson, W5NYV, and I'm here to tell you all about what... Okay. Is it playing? All right. Okay, uh, it's not playing for me. I'll try it again. It's my first time. So three, two, one, go. Not playing here at all. Okay, um, let's do the following because mm, I follow the instructions. Hello, of big, everybody. Big blue button. I'm Michelle Thompson, W5NYV, and I'm, and I'm here to tell you all about what Open Research wait. Institute is no? and what we have been doing. Open Research Institute, ORI, is a nonprofit research and development Good. organization which provides all of its work to the general public under the principles of open source and open access to research. 
As we all know, these mean particular things, and those things have to be defined, and they have to be defended. Open source is a type of intellectual property management where everything you need to recreate or modify a design is freely available. As a baseline, we use GPL version 3.0 for software and the CERN Open Hardware License version 2.0 for hardware. All we do is open source work, primarily for amateur radio space and terrestrial, but also some other fields, as you will see. So who are we? Here's our current board and our immediate past CEO, Bruce Perrins. We have one opening on the board, as Ben Hilburn, one of our founders, very recently retired from being an active director at ORI. He remains as one of our senior advisors. We are looking for someone to join ORI board that supports what we do and wants to help make it happen. It's an active role in a flat management structure. Board members are experienced in management, engineering, operations, and technology, and three out of the current number of four are from underrepresented groups in STEM. As a board, it is our mission to serve our participants, developers, and community members. We now have at least 535 people that participate in what we call the open source triad, our mailing list, our Slack, and GitHub. All work is organized in independent projects or initiatives. We have some affiliations and we proudly ascribe to the Open Space Manifesto from Libra Space Foundation. We work with radio organizations, several universities, and have worked with a variety of for-profits. What do we do? Here's a visual summary of top-level projects and initiatives. The vertical axis is risk. Higher risk projects are at the top, and lower risk projects are at the bottom. Maturity increases left to right. Maturity may indicate schedule, but the score is also influenced by complexity or difficulty. The color of the shape indicates how much stress that project is under or what the risk level is at this time. The size of the shape is the budget estimate. By far, the largest budget, riskiest, and least mature work is in the Aquaphage project, which is an open source bacteriophage research and development. Bacteriophage are viruses that attack and destroy bacteria. This is a biomedical project and not amateur radio. This project has been halted by COVID and has not yet resumed. Our digital multiplexing payload project is called P4DX and it's in the middle in green. This is a multiple access microwave digital regenerating repeater for space and terrestrial development. Channels divided in frequency are the uplink. The uplink is on five gigahertz. The processor on the payload digitizes and multiplexes these signals and uses DVB S2X as the single time division downlink. The downlink is on 10 gigahertz. The system adapts to channel conditions and handles things like quality of service decisions. For example, low and high latency digital content. The uplink is divided up using a polyphase channelizer based on the open source work done by Theseus cores. For the current prototype, we are only using MPEG transport stream, but generic data is the goal with GSE. The prototype beacon signal is 5 MHz wide, and we are using one modulation and one error coding at this time. We're not yet rotating through all of the allowed combinations in DVB S2 and S2X yet. Our prototype work can also serve as a terrestrial multimedia beacon. Work was demonstrated to groups with mountaintop spaces in October 2021, and deployment will be as soon as possible. M17 project is an open source VHF UHF radio protocol. Think open source digital mode HTs and repeaters. This project is only slightly more stressed than P4DX, but it's further along in maturity because it's narrower in scope. We believe M17 project will be very successful from current development to scaling up to commercial product launch. The M17 protocol is the native digital uplink protocol with some modifications for microwave for P4DX. We are working hard to get M17 on and through more satellites and on more sounding rockets tests today. Engineers General is our initiative to hire highly competent open source workers to reduce burnout and increase quality in open source work important to amateur radio. We have one contractor currently, eight resumes, and have applied for funding for two more. We are actively looking for funding for the remaining five. The Bird Bath is a large dish antenna at the Huntsville Space and Rocket Center. This was used in the past, but has been parked for decades. 
It took two years of negotiation, but ORI has the support of the museum and permission to begin work renovating this dish for citizen science and amateur radio educational use. Work parties from earlier this year were rescheduled due to COVID. Upper right, there are two completed projects. One is ITAR EAR regulatory work. It took over a year, but we received a determination from the State Department that open source satellite work is free of ITAR from U.S. Commerce that it is free of EAR, and we obtained an advisory opinion that publishing on the internet counts as publishing under the regulations. This is a huge step forward for not just amateur radio, but anyone that wants to contribute to open source space work. Debris mitigation regulatory work took 10 months to complete. The process culminated in a highly successful meeting with the FCC Wireless Telecommunications Board, the Office of Engineering Technology, and the Satellite Bureau in late October 2021. Lower right is battery matching, a project that matches NICAD cells for very durable batteries in the style that used to be done in amateur satellites and puts the methods and documentation in the public domain. Ambisat-inspired sensors used to be on the bottom right, but now it's bumped back a bit in maturity level and is a bit higher risk. This project was supposed to be a project done by students at Vanderbilt University, but no students materialized, primarily due to COVID. We had one kick-butt professional volunteer who was working on a 10 gigahertz beacon that would go onto the sensor connector on the main board, but the project was moving slowly overall, and ORI decided to provide additional operational support. Additional volunteers joined the team. We reviewed the finances and then took some actions. We updated the main Ambisat board to move it from the ISM band it was in to the 70 centimeter ham band. We improved power and ground and addressed some other design concerns. The boards are back as of last week and software and firmware development is underway. The 10 gigahertz sensor beacon work is proceeding quickly as well. Ambisat is an excellent educational platform, but the ISM band decision wasn't the only problem with it. It's a very small board. We decided to look at combining the 70 centimeter Ambisat with another open source satellite board to make a combined spacecraft design. I reached out to Pieros Papadias at Librospace, and we are moving forward with using the Satnog's comms project. We look forward to contributing to the FPGA code base and flying both Ambisat and Satnog's comms designs as early and as often as possible, starting with sounding rockets and ending up in space. All of these projects are open source and all work is published as it's created. When? Well, we have timelines. We were incorporated in February of 2018, got our 501c3 in March of 2019. We hit the ground running and haven't stopped since. We'll distribute a copy of the slides so you can see our wins and losses along the way. There's a lot going on here. Here's what's been going on since March and the future plans that we know about. We use Agile framework for management, and most of us have some sort of formal certification, either completed or in process. This is the Agile Manifesto, and it is the foundation of how our board decides things and how it supports project leads and volunteers. Note the second item and put in the word hardware instead of software, and that's one of the reasons we demonstrate early and often and incorporate the feedback quickly. Where are we? Here's the locations of the concentrations of current major contributors and participants. When we say international, we mean it. Our participants have a wide range of ages, are generally educated in engineering, come from a variety of backgrounds, but they do tend to be relatively young and male. We have some physical locations that are important for carrying out the work we do. Remote labs are lab benches connected to the internet that allow direct access to advanced lab equipment and two different large Xilinx development boards and DVB S2 and S2X gear. We have relocated our second remote lab equipment from US Florida to US Arkansas and have added a three dish interferometry site for amateur radio and public science use. Remote labs are here for you all to use. If you need or want large FPGA resources and test equipment up to six gigahertz, then we have your back. We bought Open Lunar Foundation's satellite lab. It's in storage waiting for the M17 project lab construction to conclude, and then the equipment will go there to pack that lab full of wonderful test equipment, materials, and supplies. Why do this? 
We believe that an open source approach to things like amateur digital communications, bacteriophage research, and sticking up for the non-commercial use of space will result in the best possible outcomes for the good of humanity. We have a lightweight, agile approach to doing things. We keep our overhead very low, we are radically participant-focused, and the work must be internationally accessible. You can see that public demonstrations and regulatory work are given a high priority. Working code and working hardware are highly valued, and working means working over the air. Thank you to everyone at Librispace for the support and opportunity to present here today. Right. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thanks for preparing that for us. If you're here, we yes, can Michelle. Thanks questions. very much. No, oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, Red, can you change the slide? Uh, because like, we can just go to the uh, yeah, to yeah. the. Uh, I will do it if you want. Okay, I do it. Okay. So at least we see the background. Okay. Wow, that, that was amazing and uh, very inspiring. And uh, it's totally in line, I think, what is the, 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 the goal of this workshop. And, and for me particularly, I was, uh, when I saw Light White, I mean, that's, I'm totally in, yeah. Keep things simple, accessible, understandable. Uh, but let's see, do we have questions from the, uh, from the chat, from the audience? I see Jan Peter is typing. Mm -hmm. We see the questions coming in. Um, meanwhile, so you mentioned a bit uh, the, the the process of how to join the research institute. Maybe you, Michelle, you want to go a bit into detail there. Oh, sure, no, I'd be happy to. Um, so we don't sell memberships. We're not a membership society or amateur radio club. Um, and I know that does disappoint some people. But we did this on purpose in order to not compete with um, with with membership societies. Uh, but joining means if you if you join, you're welcome uh, as a participant. Uh, we we do ask that if you if you join uh, Open Research Institute as a participant, you're you're usually joining through a, a project because uh, we're project based, uh, and we ask people to to commit to a code of conduct and it's a very standard code of conduct very similar to the one at Librispace. Um, and that's it that's that's it as long as you are are willing to to commit to that then you're welcome and you are you are in ORI. From a project perspective we have a, a short guide on our website at openresearch.institute so if you have a project that you would like uh, some help with um, that you need a, a 501c3 in the U.S. to to help sponsor your project or to support you, um, then then we have a guide for that too. So there's two ways to join. One is a participant on a project, and one if you have a project that needs, uh, you know, a little bit of of help, a corporate structure that's aligned with your goals. Okay, very good. Jan Peter is already interested in uh, making a podcast about it, so. Uh, I think he will contact you in the next days. And Red is asking, do you have example of support made by uh, the Research Institute to non-US projects? Is that possible even? Yes, it's possible. Um, we've we've done our homework with respect to the United States Internal Revenue Service. And we do have to fill out extra paperwork. But we've already supported people in Italy, Poland, uh, the UK, Germany, and I think that all we've given is advice to Japan, to people in Japan. Um, the 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 thing that that matters is if you if you give any material support. But but yes, we are prepared to 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 give full support internationally. Um, and and I should put an asterisk there. You know, we we do our absolute very best to make sure we comply. If we do run into any sort of issues with limitations that we uh, that we have, then then we'll raise them with that particular group or individual along the way. Um, but no, there isn't any impediment for sharing information or data. Uh, we we pursued a regulatory path of of protecting our volunteers and putting that first and foremost so there isn't any danger in doing open source work internationally and our goal is to also 
provide uh, material support for, for anybody uh, around the world. Okay, thanks very much. Unfortunately, the time is progressing very fast and uh, um, I think we have to uh, conclude here, but I'm sure there will be more questions in the chat. You're available in the chat uh, for the next, uh, uh, for, an, for the time, right? And uh, yes, actually yes, you're, so you're, you're always in the chat available. Um, yes. So looking forward to that. And uh, so thanks.